They're some of the most hard-working members of the police, specially bred and trained to perform tasks that bolster the service's crime-fighting capabilities. Police dogs are high-value assets with a proven track record. So why are they seemingly treated with such disdain, at least at one of the country's canine training facilities? I went to find out. Fearless, powerful, security dogs can be an invaluable weapon when bred and trained to detect explosives, track poachers and find missing people. Many owe their survival to these extraordinary dogs. A trained dog is invaluable. I think we are the factor that the, that's keeping them back. They are capable of so much. Uh, their noses are incredible. Their loyalty is incredible. We can teach them anything. Taste Klein started out in the South African police as a dog handler before becoming an internationally accredited trainer, supplying dogs to war zones around the globe. Suspect Sunstein. Can you put a price tag on a well-trained dog? Putting a price tag is difficult, depending on the, on the level of training we've put into it. The highest trained dog would probably be an explosive detection dog because of the level of danger of the work. Anything between 8,000 to 10,000 US dollars. And so we investigated why millions of taxpayer rands appear to be squandered in the management of these dogs. Watching these dogs go through their paces is incredibly impressive. I wouldn't like to be chased down by one or be carrying any illegal substances. They take crime fighting to another level. And right now, we need all the help we can get. But there's a problem, a massive shortage of dogs within the police. The crisis has been brewing for years. In 2020, at least 80 puppies died from the parvo virus at Rudeplot Police K9 Academy, the police's primary facility for breeding and training, and where all police dogs get medical treatment. Now, two years later, Renata Barnard, a whistleblower with Solidarity Trade Union, is speaking out once again. Almost up to three quarters of the unit, the people doesn't have trained to dogs. And even the novice canine handlers, they are waiting since 2017 for training courses. So they are uh, reporting for duty every day, but they don't have dogs. The Parvo virus outbreak spelled disaster for Rudeplot and shut down the state-of-the-art breeding program. But that wasn't all. COVID-19 lockdown measures meant halving the staff on duty and surviving puppies were abandoned in their two by two meter cages. The best they could manage was to feed and clean them, not much more. No exercise? Nothing. Some of these dogs, the majority of them are Belgium Malinois and they are very active dogs. So they need oh. exercises. They need to be taken out four to six hours a day. But the puppies were never socialized. They were not taken out so that they can see other people, get used to cars. Nothing was done like that. These dogs need hours of exercise and stimulation every day. So to leave them languishing in a cage for around two years is extreme cruelty, not to mention a huge waste of an invaluable state asset. <laughs> Unthinkable for a breeder like Laura van Veek. Her Malinois puppies, just like human babies, are stimulated from the moment they open their eyes, preparing them for their future careers. I'm not a trainer, but I do raise my puppies, um, so I prepare them for their trainers. We start picking them up, turning them around, holding them, dropping bowls next to them so that they get used to all different kinds of sounds. Um, and from there, you know, they go all over the world, America, Africa, uh, Mozambique, wherever they are required. Neglecting Malinois can harm them severely, either making them overly aggressive or fearful and untrainable. That's exactly what happened with some of the police's puppies that survived. 
So in September, the police dumped 214 dogs at the NSPCA. The public accused the NSPCA of not doing their job, demanding that they prosecute the police. But Arnaud de Klerk says they inspected Drude Plant during lockdown and found nothing wrong. At no point did anyone contact the SPCA or NSPCA to report any of these so-called so cruelty conditions and lack of training that has been happening at Rueda Plot. If we knew that these conditions or if we knew that these allegations were being made, we would not have hesitated to take any action in terms of the, uh, of the Animals Protection Act. But it gets even more controversial. The police have been buying dogs since the beginning of this year through a hefty 26 million rand tender, which called for trainable, trained dogs and breeding dogs. The police reopened their breeding program. Dog breeding and training are specialized fields, but the multi-million rand tender specified no previous experience required, which to me, makes no sense at all. And the lion's share of the contract went to a cleaning company called Abida SA. That's right, a cleaning company, which already has a 27 million rand government tender. Tenderpreneurs Phoebe Muka and Mohotsi Matila have no prior experience in breeding or training dogs. Rebranding themselves at Beta Security, they source dogs by subcontracting well-known trainer Tace Klein. Abita charged the police three times more for the dogs than what they were paying. That agreement was cancelled by myself in March of this year. Why? The first one was just the unprofessional approach to delivering the dogs. You ask me for 20 dogs, you give me two or three months and I provide you with 20 dogs. No kennel is sitting on 60 or 80 dogs. And we would get these messages on a Wednesday that we need to show the Thursday 20 dogs. And then again on a Friday. The deal is that instructors must assess dogs at Ruder Plant to see if they have the aptitude for police work before they buy them. One time we sent the dogs there, they tested the dogs. They failed all the dogs. The Monday they phoned me again, they told me to bring back the dogs, the same dogs, because they've changed their curriculum or their, their, their checking score. Major General Hendrik Chauke heads up the Ruderplot training facility. He pointed out that 20% of the animals that went to the NSPCA were public donations and that the pandemic had impacted the training program. Due to the challenges of COVID, we were unable to work these dogs accordingly in order to keep them into the program as such. Now, these handlers that we are training, they were also part of the operation to ensure that there's compliance in terms of the Disaster Management Act. So we were training minimal. Confused? Well, so are we. And then the general went on to change his story. These dogs were not properly exercised, stimulated or trained uh, for about uh, two I, years. I disagree. Probably the information that you'll have been given, you'll have been given by somebody else that he knows better than me. But as a responsible person... From insiders? I, I, I will not answer to the insiders who are faceless. So were they trained or weren't they? Now, experienced breeders and trainers have told us that the selection process is chaotic. I'm not sure what information you will have received and then what factors they've given to you. And that is news to me. Meanwhile, when Tace pulled out of the contract, Abida asked Laura for all her puppies. And when they were nine months old, the selection process at Ruderplot began but it was just as unprofessional as Tace had found. The seven hour round trip to the facility was costly and time consuming. So Laura relented and let Phoebe Mooker transport four dogs to Ruderplot for the assessment. So were you very concerned when she drove away with your four dogs? Initially, no, because she was going to bring them back on the Tuesday and she never did. So she said, no, she wants to retest them. And so I said, OK, well, it's only four days later, retest them and then bring them back. And then she didn't. 
Weeks turned to months, and Mooka didn't return the dogs. You can see the bond that Laura has with her dogs, so not knowing where they were for two months, finally drove her to the High Court with an urgent application. Which she won, but Laura soon discovered that Abida Security had been supplying her dogs to the police illegally. Only Tace was officially subcontracted. By now, Laura was severely out of pocket. The beat never paid to raise or transport the dogs, to say nothing of the legal costs. It angers me that somebody can come into this industry and just think that they can make all this money of somebody else's hard work. Ibida's lawyers advised them not to speak, and Major General Chaoke claimed he had no authority to talk about the tender. Our questions about the shady dealings with Ibida and how much the police is overpaying for the dogs went unanswered. But the situation just got murkier. A cost-cutting order for the police, leaked to us in our investigation, shows orders to dispose of more dogs. General, how were you affected by the Divisional Commissioner's command in October? Uh, yeah, I... Mm -hmm. That the disposal of dogs must commence immediately to save on dog food and medical expenditure? No, no, this, it's not the... It was not directed to us, you see. It was General Mutlala. It doesn't apply to your department? Yes, it does not apply to my department. Chawake seemed thrown by this new information. The document applies to dogs in the rest of the police. But the question remains, why would an already under-resourced department give away more valuable canine assets paid for by taxpayers? Our best friend's ability to fight crime remains unharnessed. Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.